Hey guys, welcome to the video. So today we are going to be diving into all of the different options that you have for camping at Camp EDC. So whether you are attending this year and you want to learn a little bit more about your options or you're already planning for next year and you're not sure which tickets you want to go with, today I'm going to give you a full breakdown of Moon Glow camping versus Desert Rose camping versus RV camping at Camp EDC. So if you guys are new here, welcome to my channel. I have a full EDC Las Vegas playlist with over 90 videos on EDC to help you prepare. It's why I started my YouTube channel over six years ago, so I've got you guys. Definitely feel free to subscribe and watch those after this video. But today I'm going to dive into a full breakdown of each of these accommodations. So we're going to talk price points, what's included with your ticket. I'm going to show you photos of the map and the shift pods so you guys can see what that's like. Um, and years prior as well, I did the moon glow shift pods in 2021 and then I did RV camping in 2022. So I do have experience with both of those. So I'm going to share a little bit about what you guys can expect. With all that being said, let's dive right into the video. So first and foremost, what you should know about Camp EDC is the passes that you purchase do not include your festival ticket. So you still do need to purchase your full EDC Las Vegas ticket and then think of this as your accommodations that you purchase on top of it. Um, so just know that your pass does not include the ticket to EDC Vegas. Uh, what it does include is camping Thursday through Monday. So you are able to arrive as early as Thursday and then everybody leaves on Monday. Um, and you also get your own entrance to the festival, which is really, really nice. So it is a Camp EDC entrance. You can go in and out. You do have those privileges. So if you do need to run back to your campgrounds at any point, you can totally do that. Um, so it's really nice. We never had to wait that long. Security was pretty quick. So obviously one of the biggest pros of Camp EDC is the ease it takes to get into the festival. When it ends, you are back in your campgrounds like 15 minutes later. It's so much nicer than trying to get back to your hotel or dealing with driving. So if you did make this choice and you did get these tickets, I will say it is amazing. All right, with all that being said, let's dive into the first option, which is your Moon Glow Shift Pods. So think of this as your GA pass. Um, you only need one pass for your entire group. So designate your group leader who's gonna buy that for you and just one person will buy it and you guys will split the cost. So you can get up to four people in a Moon Glow Shift Pod. So whether there's two of you, three of you, or four of you, you will get up to four bands to sleep in there. The price is $11.99 plus fees and taxes. So again, you will split that cost and you will get a vehicle pass included as well if you guys want to, you know, drive and park in the blue lot and then get into your shift pod. So the shift pod itself, it's this like big silver dome. It's weather resistant, multi-layered and ultra reflective fabric. So it's kind of like an advanced shelter system. Um, it is a pretty decent size. Four of us camped in our Moon Glow Shift Pod in 2021 and fit comfortably with all of our luggage and stuff in there. So it's 12 and a half by 12 and a half by six and a half dimension wise. Um, what's included in the Moon Glow? Obviously up to four camping bands. You get the Shift Pod itself. The floor of pretty much everything Shift Pod is this like fake turf grass that they put down because obviously you guys are in the parking lot of the arena so it's all this like kind of like cushiony turf grass on the floor you get a hanging lamp included a power strip included two doors so if you are going to bring tent locks to secure everything make sure you bring two tent locks and then you have five window flaps that like zip open so that is everything that comes with moon glow you need to bring your own bedding pillows all that stuff none of that is included so make sure that you bring that your own food obviously everything else you would pack with you for a camping festival. So when we come to the map, I don't have the 2023 map yet, but looking at 2022, um, Camp EDC breaks it down by different gemstone colors. So you have, for moon glows, you have the amethyst area, which are the purple tents. That's closer to the parking lot, which is the blue lot. Then you have the sapphire section. That's where we camped in 2021. We arrived around 12 p.m. on Thursday, I want to say, and got a really good spot. The Sapphire was pretty close to the Mesa and really close to the festival entrance, so we kind of lucked out there. Then you also have the Ruby area, which is much further back 
kind of towards the back of the mesa um, with the moonstone ones. Those are also like much, much further in the back. And then you also have the turquoise lot. So those are all of the moon glow shift pods. So think of that again as your GA options. Then we shift gears. We go to the desert rose shift pods, which are your VIP camping options. So again, you buy one pass and this is for up to two people. So only two people max can go in the desert rose VIP um, shift pods. The cost of this is $14.99 plus fees and taxes. It's the exact same shift pod, exact same dimensions with the like reflective outer thing. Usually just like the color um, tarp that they put over the top is a different color just so that you can decipher what like lot is what. But what is included in this, obviously everything that's included in Moonglow with the addition of a queen size or two twin high quality raised air mattresses. So you can pick what you want queen bed or two twin beds and then you get bedding so you get pillows pillowcases duvet flat and fitted sheets all of that is included you also get access to the ga plus bathrooms inside of the festival so if you want like the nicer bathrooms you get that included with your desert rose pass you also get a designated um, check-in lane so kind of like a vip lane when you check into camp and then same thing hanging lamp power strip two doors five zipper flaps so really the only difference you're paying for is basically like your bedding so if you don't want to bring you know your sleeping bag and your pillows and you want like a cushy comfy air mattress and you just want that little bit of an elevated experience then I would go for VIP I've had friends do it before Um, it's supposed to be set up for you when you get there I know in years prior my friends have had to set it up themselves because they weren't ready on time but should be set up for you so When you look at the festival map, this is also going to give you prime placement. So if you look at the citrine lot, that like gold camping like tarp is the desert rose. So you're like prime spot closest to the festival entrance. You're really close to the mesa as well. So you also have that to consider that you're going to be like really nice and easy walk into the festival. And then lastly, let's talk RV camping because I know a lot of people have questions about RV camping. What I will say for my own group is we had our team leader, Cammie, who was amazing. She drove our RV and she was kind of like our rave mom. I know nothing about RVs. <laughs> I can't drive one. I don't know anything about it. So if you have like a designated person who's willing to take on that responsibility, um, she did the research. We had, I believe we had eight people in our RV, which is the max amount of people you're allowed Um, so she kind of picked the RV, she rented that and drove it to Vegas, and then we all basically met up, and on Wednesday, the night before check-in, we stayed in an RV, like, campgrounds, like, really close to the Strip, which was super easy, um, and then we drove in on Thursday morning, like, really early at, like, 8.30 a.m., so we were some of the first people to get there, um, which was really nice, but if you want to do RV camping, here is everything that's included with that. So again, it's completely up to you to pick your RV. So whatever size you want to get, whether it's like a small camper van for two of you or it's like a straight up bus for eight people, like the cost will vary depending on what your budget is. So you guys need to go get your RV and handle your own rental on your own. So you have to consider that cost alone. Then again, you buy one RV pass, just one for your whole group and you can get up to eight camping vans with that max so however many people you're going to have in there you can have up to eight people Um, the cost of the rv pass is 499 dollars plus fees and taxes so we had eight people in our van we had to split the cost of the rv rental then we split the cost of the 499 and then we also did the power hookup so you have add-ons you do not have to do the power hookup if you don't want you can have your own generator on your rv if you want to run that yourself There's a 30 amp power hookup, which is another $450 plus fees and taxes, or there's a 50 amp power hookup, which is an additional 650 plus fees and taxes. So again, really quickly, bare minimum is $499 plus fees and taxes to get your RV in there. And then if you want to do a power hookup, again, the spots are limited because they're separate. So there's like the power section for RVs and then there are these the RVs that just like pull in so you guys will be separated um so you can pay an additional basically like 900 to 1200 dollars for that RV that you will split with your group 
Um, and then what's included with that, there are water and pump out services available for purchase on site at Camp EDC. There was like we had our own um, like RV concierge in the middle of the Mesa that you could go check in. So you could, they were available Thursday through Sunday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So if you needed any of those services, um, you can go do that. We needed a water refill and we didn't end up getting it because they were already so backed up that it was going to take them like a day and a half to refill our tank and you had to be in the RV at the time of the appointment and we just didn't think we would be there when they would be able to come. So that's the only thing that sucked is we ran out of water so we weren't able, like able to use our bathroom from like Friday to Sunday. So that's like something to consider as well. If you do need an additional car, so say like you can't all meet up in advance and be on the RV for the security check-in, you can purchase an additional car pass so people could arrive by car and check in and then like walk over to the RV camping. Uh, you will get access to the normal like porta potties and free showers that are included in camp. Um, and then the other thing to think about is there isn't really additional space for like a lounge or a canopy setup and things like that. Like you can't really bring that stuff in. So a lot of camping festivals usually like your RV might have an overhang that you can like stick out and put like couches and all these like lounging things. The spots are pretty small. Plus, like, consider the wind in Vegas. Like, you really need to, like, you would have to really, really, like, anchor things down to the ground. So, really, there's, like, no, like, outside spot around your RV to do that. I did notice that some people had, like, foldable tables with, like, their DJ equipment out. And some people did, like, string lights that they would hang out. Um, or maybe they were able to fit, like, a small, like, blow-up couch outside their RV but for the most part don't really like go into it thinking that you're going to do that it really just like is your RV hookup spot pretty much and then lastly when we look at the map you guys can see the RV campsites so you do have some that are really close to the festival entrance you have Camp OG which is like literally some of the OG insomniac people they do this like huge stage setup I didn't go over there but you could hear the music <laughs> playing from over there so they had their whole like renegade campgrounds, which was cool. And then um, depending on if you have the power hookup or not, we were like in the area kind of closest to that Sapphire Moon Glow shift pod. Um, so I guess technically we were part of the Emerald section of the RVs. And then you also have the Moonstone um, section closer to the car parking, which are the other RVs. So I believe those are in the non-power hookup RVs. So depending on what you have... Um, Again, you could be closer to the festival or you could be a little bit uh, closer to the car entrance. Um, everybody checks in in the same spot for the RV entrances, so it's completely separate from the car, like where you park and you're going to go to your Moonglow or your Desert Rose, totally separate entrances. And you guys will see signage when you're pulling in, like it'll say like RVs go this way or like Moonglow and Desert Rose shift pods go this way. So it's super easy to navigate. I think that's everything for now. If you guys have any other questions, definitely feel free to uh, leave them down below. I'm happy to answer anything. Like I said, I do have other Camp EDC um, Q&As up on my channel. I have my vlogs from the last two years. So you can really see in my 2021 vlogs what the Moonglow shift pods were like. And then in my 2022 vlogs, you guys will see the RV camping experience. Um, there's pros and cons to both, but you really can't go wrong. I think Camp EDC overall is an incredible experience. If you have a bigger budget and are you are looking for the comfort of having, you know, an RV with a bed and a kitchen and a bathroom and the power hookup, obviously it's amazing <laughs> and it made the experience even better. I was able to sleep a little bit better, but the Moon, Moon Glow was great too. It was a good option to start with. So plenty of options to consider here. I know the camping passes go very, very quickly. So if you want to do them next year, make sure you and your group like have your plan solidified, you set your alarms for when those tickets go on sale and you get on the wait list immediately if you don't get tickets because people always, you know, for whatever reason aren't able to go and they sell their passes. So that is everything, you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. And again, hit the subscribe button and check out my EDC Las Vegas playlist if you guys want to watch any more uh, information and tips videos on EDC. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Fall into you